question for you. Of course, you already know what it is because you can see the title, but uh, are 501c3 pastors really atheists? Okay, um, what do I mean by that? Well, if you don't understand what this means, 501c3 is an IRS code um, for tax-exempt um, status, official tax-exempt status. Back in the 1960s, under Lyndon Baines Johnson, they came out with this thing called tax exemption. They call it the Johnson Amendment or whatever else, whereby churches could now become officially recognized by the government as tax exempt. In other words, they don't have to pay taxes. Okay, um, Churches were already tax exempt. You don't have to pay taxes. Okay, Separation of church and state. You're not supposed to have the government regulating things within the church. And the, the carrot on the stick was now you can become official and not get in trouble, you know, whatever else. Uh, there's a whole lot of legal implications that go into the thing of having a public church building um, because now you have a pastor there and if somebody's mad at the pastor and they get bad advice from the pastor and they commit suicide or they do something else bad, then they can try to sue the pastor. And are you suing the pastor or the, or the church or who's responsible? I mean, there's so many legal issues that are involved with having a public meeting place where lost people can walk in. All right. Uh, if you don't, again, if you don't understand the church versus house church issue, ch public church, church building versus believers meeting at home, um, a lot of people are very, very ignorant of that issue. Uh, there's a lot to study on it. Um, there's a reason why God never told any Christian to build a church building, okay, and just say anybody's welcome. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. And I'll get into some of that as we continue in this video. But, um, they created this, this thing, the carrot on the stick was now you can say, we don't have to pay taxes, but the, anytime the government gives you a little carrot on the stick, there's a, there's a hook there, so to speak. Okay. There's something that they get in return. What did they get in return? Well, now the pastors are not allowed to say anything about elections. Did you ever hear a pastor say that? If you're going to church somewhere, I can't tell you who to vote for. Why not? because they're 501c3. It's a government corporation. They're licensed by the state to preach. Do you ever go to a wedding and you hear, and now by, now, uh, by the power invested in me by the state of wherever, I pronounce you man and wife. Do you ever hear that? Power invested in me by the state? I thought power is supposed to be invested in a preacher by God. Hmm. But, um, so you can't tell people who to vote for. You can't do anything that affects public policy According to their, the IRS's own website, their own papers and things for 501c3. And uh, you can't transfer ownership um, to a non-tax exempt, a non-501c3 uh, entity. In other words, if you own a church building, the church owns it. It's actually, you know, not really the church that owns it. It's actually a government property. So when you go to a 501c3 church, you are literally walking onto a government facility. That's why when the government came out over this whole coronavirus thing and said, close your doors, live stream only. That's why the churches said, they snapped to attention. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Sig Heil, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's why they snapped to attention like that. But I heard a, a, a lost man, um, pretty much, you know, in my opinion, an atheist. And, and the guy said, literally said something which I think is really a shame for a lost man to say this about church buildings. And he said, apparently these pastors, uh, the government is more important and more powerful than God to them. You know, you get to thinking about that. And I thought, you know, a lot of these pastors, uh, they, they don't profess to be atheist, obviously, or else they wouldn't get the nice salary that they do. But uh, what's their real inward heart condition? Do they really believe in God? Do they really believe that the God of the Bible can protect them? I don't think so. But let me just show you something real quickly here from the Bible, King James Bible, Acts chapter 5. You have a King James Bible, turn to Acts chapter 5. Well, we're supposed to submit to the government. We're supposed to submit and everything else. Um, well, let me just explain something real quickly there too, by the way, this thing of submission to the government. Um, submission to civil authorities is something, they're not a terror to good works. It says over in Romans 13. 
um, they're a terror to the evil, you know, uh, people that steal, people that kill, you know, pe drunkards, whatever else. Um, I get that. But here's the problem. Religious leaders oftentimes influence civil authorities. Okay. I'm going to talk about that in another video. And that's what happened with Jesus Christ. You had the religious Jews of his day influencing Pontius Pilate to get him to do something illegal. Pontius Pilate, you know, Jesus didn't do anything worthy of death. He, he even said that to the Jewish, you know, to the multitudes out there and said, he hasn't done anything worthy of death. And they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. You know, so Pontius Pilate actually disobeyed the law. So, but they, you know, they brought up uh, Pontius Pilate's uh, job security, you know. If you, if you let him go, you're not a friend of Caesar. So, oh man, well, I guess I'll have to disobey my own laws then. But, uh, and that's the danger of the, the whole thing of religion influencing, you know, civil government. But I'm going to just show you something here, what a Christian's attitude should be towards this whole situation. Um, Acts chapter 5, verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them. So you see the two, the two working together there, the civil authorities of verse 26 and the council, the religious authorities of verse 27, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Look what Peter says. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. These pastors that shut their church buildings down, do they obey God or man? Did God tell them to shut it down? No. Nope. I mean, you think about it. What's, what's the stuff that they're coming out with the stupid news media? Well, you got to wear this face mask thing on your face, which is completely ineffective. You study the science behind it. It's not going to protect you from a virus. Give me a break. <laughs> it's cutting off your oxygen supply. I mean, think about this. You're walking down the street at night, a dark street, dark alley or whatever else, and somebody comes up behind you and they put their hand over your mouth like that, put their you know hand over your mouth and your nose, cover that. You're not going to say, oh, thank you for protecting me from the coronavirus. You know, I feel much safer now. <laughs> you're going to say, hey, you're, you're trying to stop me from breathing. But you can put a cloth over it like that and it slows down your breathing, which means less oxygen getting to the brain. You can pretty much tell that when you try to talk to these people. Um, you're cutting off oxygen supply into your body. Does that help or hurt your immune system? Think about that one. But people take this thing. They do this face mask thing. They do social distancing. You got to wear rubber gloves and disinfect everything. Couldn't you still go to church? You know, just sit six feet away. Just everybody you know, put little little stickers on the pews, you know. Sit here, sit there, two rows up, you know, you got you to gotta measure six feet, you know, squares. <laughs> There's something, you know, oh, why couldn't they do that? And yet the government says, close down your church. Completely against the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. I think is how it goes. And yet they did. Violating Americans' First Amendment rights and violating you know, what many churches say that they're supposed to assemble, not forsaking the assembling of themselves together. They violated it. And the pastor just went right along with it. Why? Because their God is the government. They don't believe in the God of this book right here. Peter and the apostles, we ought to obey God rather than men. And they were commanded, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? They are commanded. They were given orders by the religious leaders and the civil authorities. You are not allowed to do this. We ought to obey God rather than men. Hmm. And yet you want me to believe that the people that sit in the church buildings that just like that follow the government, yes, will shut down. They're saved. They're worshiping the God of the Bible. They're, they're worshiping the same God that Peter and the apostles did. I don't think so. And you know what the sad part is? The lost world sees it. They look and they say, 
What's this? So the secular government comes and he tells the churches to shut down and they say, yes, sir, it's fake. You're not a Christian. Imagine how it would have convicted the lost world if they would have looked and said, the pastors are saying, I'll not shut my church down. I don't care what commands you have. God didn't tell me to do it. I'm not going to shut down my church and I'm not going to shut my mouth. We're going to take you to jail. Okay. Imagine the news reports coming out. Pastors all across the country have been arrested because they refused to shut down their churches. They were convicted, lost people. They'd say, wow, those preachers really have some real convictions there. They really do believe in God. They really do believe the Bible. But the pastors just go right along with the government orders and the lost world says, look at this, look at that. They're shutting down. And the atheist says, your beliefs aren't any different than mine. You're no different than I am. Morally speaking, I'm just as good as you. I'll submit to the government and do what they tell me to do, and you're doing the same thing. You're not any different. And you go down, I'm not going to read out the whole thing here, but if you jump down to uh, um, verse 40, Gamaliel stands up and basically says, uh, this work or this counsel be of men, it will come to naught, you know, verse 38. Um, verse 39, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. If a movement is of God, by the way, you can't overthrow it. Okay? If the church buildings were of God, you can't shut them down. If the pastors were really genuinely saved and believed the Bible, they wouldn't be silent. Verse 40, and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them. Religious authorities take the civil soldiers and things and say, beat those Christians. And they beat them. Your pastor that shut down, if you still go to church, if you're still dumb enough to do that, your pastor that shut down, would he take a public beating? I hardly doubt it, or I hardly hardly believe it. <laughs> Highly doubt it, say it that way. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They commanded them again. Beat them and then commanded them, don't preach in the name of Jesus. Stop. We give you a, an official order. And what do they do? Verse 41, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Huh. Oh, not me. I, hey, hey, brother, I could, I had to shut my church down. I could, I could lose my license to preach. I could, they could take my church from me. I, could, I mean, I could lose my pension. I could lose my retirement fund. I don't have my house paid off yet, brother. This is serious business. Go back to that in just a minute. And verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, in every house, hmm, they ceased not to teach and priest, preach Jesus Christ. You know why so many people got saved in the first century? Because those early Christians had convictions. They were willing to die for Jesus Christ. They were willing to be beaten, publicly humiliated, they're willing to be poor. And uh, they didn't have church buildings where they worried about their character and walk in Sunday morning and is my, is my uh, lapel pin here good? Okay. You know, make sure my suit jacket's on right, make sure my tie's tied correctly. They used to do that stuff. Stupid bunch of nonsense. It's false. Nowhere in the King James Bible. If you're still doing that stuff, you better repent and get away from these church buildings. They're wicked. They're of the devil. He said, what'd you say? I said, they're wicked and of the devil. That's what these church buildings are. You say, well, what about you? You're making all these inflammatory videos and everything else, this King James Video Ministries. Yeah, it's not registered with the government. I'm not 501c3. I had the opportunity. I had an accountant and she was trying to get me into it. And I said, no, no. 
well, you know, okay, you know, you're really supposed to be. I said, oh, I don't, I don't have to be, right? And she said, no. She said, you don't. There's no law saying that you as a ministry have to be, you know, officially call yourself tax exempt. But she said, it's just, you know, it's a little bit easier paperwork wise. I said, no, <laughs> I'm not doing it. KingJamesVideoMinistries.com, my website, King James Video Ministries, is not a 501c3 tax exempt organization. So you, you send uh, donations to this ministry, don't write it off on your taxes. Okay, don't look for me as a, as a way to get money back on your tax return or something like that. Well, I give charitably to this ministry, so therefore I can write this off. And you're expecting to get something back from donations you give to the Lord's work. A little crooked, aren't you? Okay, <laughs> I've preached against that thing for years and years and years. It just disgusts me. Well, you know, I work hard, so I should be able to give my tithe, my 10% tithe, which is also not biblical, and I should give that and I should get something back. You know, I mean, give me a break. But here's, here's the whole thing. When you study the legal issues here, I, the, for the government to come after me, they have to violate my First Amendment rights of freedom of speech. They have to go after me as an individual. Okay, if somebody wants to sue me, they have to sue me as an individual. That's far more difficult than suing a corporation. All right, you can go after a corporation and they have insurance and they have all the other stuff and, and whatever else. And if they violated their 501c3, you know, rules and laws and bylaws and all that other stuff, then you can go and you can get them in court. But uh, a free man like myself, well, I can say what I want. Okay, I, I, you know, uh, except for on YouTube because then you get censored, <laughs> which I still say what I want, but you know what I mean. But uh, just if you're still going to these church buildings, I mean, especially after your pastor has shut the place down because the government told him to, that's very, very serious. I do pray that you come out of it. And I do pray you study this issue more. Um, I've done a lot of different videos on this issue of 501c3. If, you're, if you find out your pastor is 501c3, you are literally dealing with a guy that is under secular government authority. God is not his superior, so to speak. It's the government. And if God says to do one thing and the government says to do another, they'll follow the government. Please get out of those church buildings.